A few months ago, the online shop builder Payhip has announced that they will be soon opening a marketplace. And I think that a lot of us were thinking, is this going to be a good Etsy alternative? Their marketplace is currently live, up and running. And in this video, I'm going to take you to their marketplace. We're going to go over the things that you can sell there, how the marketplace looks like, how you can list your items to the marketplace, how it looks if someone clicks on one of your items from the marketplace. We're going to also do a little bit of a comparison to Etsy and of course my personal take or my personal thoughts about the Payhip marketplace. But before I do that, I have to just get one thing out of the way first and that is... Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mero and I teach creative people how to sell their art online and today we're talking about the Payhip marketplace and I feel like in order for us to discuss the Payhip marketplace, I have to put in a sentence first about what is Payhip. Payhip is a shop builder. It's a free to join shop builder that you can basically sell digital download products, whether they're printables or digital files of any kind, like music, video, PNG, Procreate brush sets, and so on and so on. You can also sell your courses, coaching services, a membership, and actual physical products. And actually make a product that is a bundle of several products together. It's a really cool platform. They pay you right away as the client pays them using PayPal or Stripe, depends on your choice. And of course, they take a little bit of a fee, but their platform is free to use. You also have memberships there where you can pay a little bit extra to have less fees or no fees. But in general, a pay hip shop is free to start with. You don't even have to have your own domain in order to start a pay hip shop, but if you do want to have your own domain, then the cost would be around $11 or $12, where you would buy it on a hosting and domain service such as Hostinger and integrate it with Payhip, and that would be the cost of a website for a year, which is not a big cost at all. I have been using Payhip personally for more than three years, so I have a lot of experience with their platform that also includes an endless amount of pages that you can upload to your online shops, as well as a blog feature, which is pretty dope. But back to the marketplace concept, what can you sell on the marketplace? And for that, I'm going to take you to my screen. I'm going to do this a lot in this video. I like to call it a ping pong video where you're going to see me and then my screen and then me again and then my screen again. So let's start the ping pong with what is available for selling on the Payhip marketplace. Welcome to the Payhip marketplace. And I want to show you a little bit how it looks and what you can sell in it. So as I mentioned, you can only sell design files and this is basically how it looks. You have four featured products. Not sure how they pick those because this one has like 115 reviews, but this one has no rating. This one has 11 reviews and this one has no rating. So I wonder how they chose those. Maybe let's refresh the page and see if I get different ones. Nope. Same ones. And they're all from four different creators. Now, exploring the categories, 3D, Roblox, crafts, music, and sound design, design, drawing and painting, photography, fitness and health, fiction, books, writing and publishing, business and money, films, recorded music, how is it not the same as music and sound designs, but fine, audio, really, comics and graphic novels, okay, education, gaming, and software development, and you can also find these categories here, and let's go to fitness and health, and you can find running. Running, running tour, sight running. And here you can find an e-course, Tour de Gourmont Trail, 10 one-hour personal training for running. I think for the majority of the people watching this video or my natural audience, we'll be focusing on the design category. So let's enter that one. And here you have architecture, branding, like logos, business cards, and social media. Entertainment design, fashion design, fonts, graphics, such as assets and templates, marketing and social, mockups, Canva, Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop. We have textures and patterns and vector graphics. Let's go into textures and patterns. And we have some seamless texture. It says that it's a brush. It's really weird though, but you can also sell brushes under drawing and painting, digital illustration, illustration brushes. Let's say I want to do a Procreate brush and you can find it here. It's not really telling me how many results I have, but this is where you can find it. And of course you can find the popular tags 
on the screen. These are the things that you can sell on the Payhit Marketplace. They have to fit in to one of their existing categories. So based on the list of these items, do you think that you have anything you want to sell on the Payhit Marketplace based on the categories of these items? If you do want to sell on the Payhit Marketplace, well, you can't just join the marketplace as if you're joining Etsy. You're going to have to have a Payhip shop first because there are criterias in order to be accepted to sell in the marketplace. And those are from the Payhip marketplace page, from their announcement of the marketplace. You need to already have your shop on Payhip, which again is free. You need to have made at least $10 in sales in a lifetime and their account team needs to review your shop. So you need to, after you have a shop, after you made $10 in sales, apply yourself to be on the marketplace and get accepted after their team reviews your store, which to a lot of people, that would be a bummer. But a lot of people will also say, I think it's kind of nice that someone is reviewing the shops before accepting it. Maybe it would be less spammy than other marketplaces. If you do have your own Payhip store and you've made at least $10 selling on your Payhip store and were reviewed by the Payhip team and accepted to the marketplace, you're gonna have to submit each listing that you have on your Payhip store onto the marketplace manually and have that listing get accepted. It's going to be reviewed by a person manually and it has to get accepted. And I think that the process of reviewing every single listing that you have to submit might seem a bit tedious or maybe a con instead of a pro, but a lot of creative people would actually think that this is a pro since people cannot just join the platform like they will with Etsy and dump a lot of money and just upload a lot of spamming or copyright infringing listings. Let's talk about how to list your items onto the Payhip marketplace. For example, I'm gonna pick an item that I know that I haven't listed on the marketplace yet. I have this mushroom clip art set. I'm gonna click on edit. And normally when you upload a product to a marketplace, you have to actually upload the product. But in this case, because it's based on your own store, you don't have to do anything with the upload. You just go to category and tags. So this product is mushroom clip art set. I'm gonna go to category and tags and clip art, nothing, graphics. It's not a vector graphic. What can I type in PNG? No, I don't know if to put it under vector graphics or to just put it as graphics. Let's just put it as graphics. Now with the tags, I will first type my name as a tag and apparently that appears 12 times. <laughs> and I'm also gonna add print on demand because people can use it for print on demand and also apparently print on demand use because when you start typing, it's gonna show you other things that it recommends and how many people listed on that. Then I'm going to write mushroom because that's the actual thing. So I have mushrooms, that's 20. Mushroom coloring recipes, cultivation faces, enthusiastic dishes, and house paper. Mushroom clip art. I'm also going to do mushroom house, I guess. I'm just going to put clip art. Yep. Let's see. It also gave me clip art set. Clip art bundle and maybe clip art like that. And I have a maximum of 10 tags. It's not going to tell me that I'm done. But if I type in right now mushroom identification, it's just not going to add it and it's not going to tell me that it's not adding it. There's a maximum of 10 tags. And you need to mark if the product content or cover image is only for adults, which this is not. So I'm going to click on save changes. Now, if I want to see which products I have already listed onto the marketplace, I just click here on the marketplace tab, and then I can see all the items that I have on the marketplace. As you can see, some of them say listed and some of them say in review. The products that are in review are products that I literally uploaded to the marketplace about an hour ago. So they're still in review and it is telling you that it can take at most 10 days after submission for the products to be approved appreciate you bearing with us. That's nice. They also have a bulk editor, which is this one, but I found it to be kind of off. I mean, it's really nice to have a bulk editor to edit a price if I want to edit a different, like a unanimous price for all of my products. And you can edit a product that goes into a mailing list. But if I want to edit marketplace category, 
I need to choose either all products or specific products or specific collection, which could be nice. Let's say I'm looking at specific products and I can basically check them out and then place them under a category. The problem is that the minute I do that, it gets into review to be listed on the marketplace without me actually doing the marketplace tags. Now I can also edit the marketplace tags for products that I want, but in my case, would I want the same tags for everything? Maybe I can just put in like tags for all my products like May Arroyo or print on demand use. But then again, it's automatically being submitted into review and then I'll have to go over all the products immediately before it gets approved and it's kind of weird. One thing that I do have to say here is while you can go to products and to the marketplace and see what products you have listed in the marketplace or in review, two things here. One, the order in which I'm seeing the product is not the order in which I submitted them to the marketplace, rather the order that I uploaded them onto my shop. You can filter them based on product name or their status. However, if I just go to all of my products, I can't really see what is listed on the marketplace or not. I would have to do it manually or remember which ones I did. And I have 85 products right now. It's not like I have five so that I can remember it. I feel like I'm complaining about the process of uploading something to the marketplace because it's tedious and it's take like in and out and in and out and the bulk editor is not really helping me. But to be honest, this is like the easiest thing because all of these items were already listed in my store. So all I had to do is just to, you know, click on a category and tags. But yeah, I do feel that it's weird that I can't go to my own products page and have a filter of what I already submitted to the marketplace or not. I have 85 products and I'm guessing a lot of people have a lot more. So it does feel a bit tedious, but not really complaining here. Moving on to the marketplace and how it looks like. And I know that a few minutes ago, I took you to my screen and I showed you how it looked like when I was showing you the actual categories, but I do wanna show you how some things work in the marketplace, such as the search bar. I wanna talk a lot about UI Weeks. I wanna share some thoughts about the process of what happens when someone clicks on the listing and so on. So bear with me, this part is actually gonna be more interesting than you think. So ping pong number three, taking you to my screen to share with you the user experience of using the Payhip Marketplace. Let's have a look at how the Marketplace actually works or let's call it the user experience of this Marketplace. So one thing that I have found is that the search is nuts. So I'm going to search, for example, tie-dye brush set. It's loading. And this is how it loads faster after I've already done this search before I recorded this video. Okay. Sketch brushes for Procreate. Squirrel Valentine's love designs. It has 5,589 results. Set Boundaries and Find Peace, a book summary. Mother's Day Gonk Gnome Mug Wrap. Of course, Wallpaper Pack, Rainbow Unicorn. Again, I am searching for tie-dye brush set. <laughs> okay. Wizard Gonk Gnome Designs, Do More V2 Wallpaper Pack. Five printable Bible coloring pages. This is actually interesting. I'm going to save it for later. I like Bible coloring pages. Extreme brush pack, bee gnomes, birthday unicorns, sci-fi hall panel, Victor's special lunar riff tattoo set, sweetheart set. I mean, come on. Can anyone tell me what we cannot see here? I'll tell you. A tie-dye brush set. A tie-dye brush set is not here. And in fact, when I was preparing to make this video, oh wow, an outfit set, nice. Now before recording this, I actually carried on clicking more and more and more pages to try and find a tie-dye brush set. And the reason why I know that there is one is because I'm selling it and it's on the marketplace. And I found it on page 10. I'm not saying I found mine. I found the first tie-dye brush set, which was mine, on page 10 of searching for tie-dye brush sets. I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. However, I want you to see something really wonky that I found here. The UI UX of Payhip Marketplace is horrible. UI UX, for those of you who don't know, user interface and user experience. Normally, when we go into almost any marketplace, our instinct is to have the categories and 
some kind of settings that we can filter on the left, when on the right at the top there will be like filter based on what is new, filter based on what costs more money, and in this case it's here, under categories. And find the recently added highest rated most reviewed, low to high, high to low. Let's go with recently added. Again, tie-dye brush set. So slow. I'm not editing this part out. This is the speed. Silence. Don't worry, I'll be editing this part out for other things, but I just want you to see. My internet, by the way, is working fine. Yeah, we got it. Search by newest. Yep, the results are even... Uh... <laughs> yep. Of course. I think it was just showing me the newest items added. Regardless of if they have anything to do with tie-dye brush set. Now, I do want to show you something here. Let's say I'm going to go to Roblox. And I'm going to type in Procreate Brush Set. What it's doing is that it's searching for Procreate Brush Set. No products found. Because it's searching for Procreate Brush Set in the Roblox category. And this goes back to the UI UX because based on any other marketplace, the search bar that is above the menu shouldn't be affected by the menu. And I can show it to you with Creative Fabrica. So let's say I'm on Creative Fabrica and I'm on Photos, and I will search for Procreate Brush Set. I will find Procreate Brush Sets, graphics, bundles, fonts, type, I'm not sure why this is the type, but I will find Procreate Brush Sets. Why? because it wasn't searching it from this bar because this thing here, this search bar here, is above the menu. There is another smaller menu here after we started searching for things. But the UI UX here is clear and it's everywhere. If a search bar is above the menu, then it shouldn't be affected by the menu. And in the case of Payhip, it is affected by the menu that is under it, which makes no sense to most users and is very bad for user experience. Now, I do want to show you that, you know, for in fact, you can find one of my items here. It's not like it's hiding my item. So I'm going to go into drawing and illustration. And I want you also to notice this. Um, if I just hover on something, it doesn't open like something with an arrow. And that is a normal user experience. So it doesn't do that. I'm just going to click here, illustration brushes, procreate, and then I'm going to search for tie-dye. <sighs> think, baby, think. And now you can find the only two that they have here <laughs> that were not in the first 10 pages when I typed in tie-dye brush set. Now I want you to see what happens when someone from the marketplace actually clicks on an item. So I'm going to do it with this item as well as with myself. This item, tie-dye brushes for Procreate, belongs to uh, a seller called Seamless Team. I'm going to open it in a new tab. And what happens is that you can still see the Payhip Marketplace logo here and the search bar. But the rest is the product page of this shop from the shop. We have the link to the shop here. And this is probably one of the only things I like about this marketplace is because people can just look at this. This actually looks pretty cool as someone who likes tie-dye and procreate. You can see reviews if there are any. And the you might also like our items from this seller. Let me click on this. It goes back to his shop, Seamless Team, and it actually canceled the marketplace. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm going to raise the screen up a bit. We have the seamlessbrushes.com. So it already opened the domain of the individual store and the layout includes the marketplace and the search. But the minute I click on anything else here, I'm going directly to the domain of the shop and there is no reference to the marketplace whatsoever. I can go in, check out their shop, see all of their links. I'm going to do the same thing with mine. Let's open this. 
Ney Arroyo, home resources and freebies shop, about YouTube channel, free newsletter, Patreon. I need to remove the Patreon link, by the way, because I'm closing Patreon. But it's all me. It's all my things here. And, the, and immediately it changes to maytribe.com. So the paid marketplace kind of erased itself, which is good for us, the sellers on it, and very bad for the actual marketplace. And we're back to me. And at this point, I would like to kindly ask you that if you like this video so far or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because every time you do that, believe it or not, it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. With that said, I would like to move on to can this replace Etsy? And I'm saying replace because it's not going to. Maybe I'm saying also Etsy, but it could also mean like Creative Fabrica or Creative Market, other places where people will sell digital downloads. However, let's look at Etsy's traffic. If I open similar web statistics on Etsy.com, the traffic that Etsy had in July was 413 million visits. Granted, some of these visits were sellers updating their shops, so not all of the visits were buyers. And also let's take into consideration that Etsy is not a marketplace for digital items. I mean, it has digital items, but it's a marketplace for a lot of other things. So it's not like 413 million people came in to search for digital files. 413 million visits were made to the entire Etsy.com family. Now, if I have to compare this to Payhip, without laughing, it would be literally a hundred times less because Payhip had a little less than 4 million visits. Now again, who are the visits? Is it the buyer or seller? And also, is it for the marketplace? It isn't because the marketplace link is payhip.com forward slash marketplace. And when you check visits on a platform, you check on the domain itself. So all of these visits could also be to the individual shops. So anyone that has a shop on Payhip that doesn't have its own domain, but uses the Payhip domain, all of their visitors are considered the visitors or the visits of Payhip.com. So it doesn't mean that the marketplace has 4 million visits. It just means that Payhip does. Now, if you have to look at the competition, Yes, obviously, there will be more competition on Etsy. It's been going on for years, and it will have a lot more products than on Payhip and a lot more sellers. And yes, Etsy is also not directed to digital downloads. However, Etsy is a known name. People know Etsy. They click Etsy.com. They go to Etsy. People don't do that with Payhip. Another difference in comparison is that Etsy costs money. Payhip doesn't. And not only does Etsy cost money for the 20 cents a listing, Etsy also costs money to join. There was a video about a lot of the changes that they made a few months ago. I would leave a link to that one down below as well if you want to have a look at it. With that small comparison to Etsy, I would like to go over to my final thoughts about the Payhip marketplace. And I feel like this is the longest part of this video. I have a lot of thoughts. Most of them are not good. Let's start with the fact that the system is slow. In some parts of the video that I was sharing the screen, yes, I was video editing and skipping that part, otherwise it would have been tedious. But even trying to make this video, coming up with the material, going over their system, it's incredibly slow. It's one of the slowest marketplaces I have seen, and it's insane. The second thing that I would like to mention is the whole search results spam thing. I mean, if you're manually reviewing an item, let's say I made an item and it's a seamless pattern and I put it under something else, I'm guessing in the review, they will say, no, it doesn't fit that category or something like that. There is a manual review of the items. Why are the search results so bad? Why when I literally type in tie-dye brush set, it takes 10 pages and I had to load each and every one of them for about 35 seconds. So if I wanted to see tie-dye brush sets, it literally took me 350 seconds. That's nearly six minutes <laughs> to find it on a platform that only has two. So yeah, the search is really bad. And I'm sorry, but if you're a buyer and you enter a platform and you search for something, it takes half a minute to load the page and you still can't find it, you're probably not going to stay in that marketplace very long. Now, 
What I mentioned at the beginning, you already need a shop in order to be accepted to sell on the marketplace and you have to have every single item of yours like reviewed individually. To some people this will be a pro and to some people this would be a con. But I think that the biggest pro that a lot of us can think about is we're not going to have to deal with copyright infringement. And if you think that that's the case, that having someone from Payhip review the items manually before approving them means we're not going to have to deal with copyright infringement as a competition, you are sorely mistaken. Because I ran a search on the term Mickey Mouse, and after 40 seconds, when the page finally loaded, I found a lot of Mickey Mouses. And no, this is not the Mickey Mouse that is technically in the public domain. This is the actual Mickey Mouse from now, including with the logo of Nike, which, if I'm not mistaken, the logo of Nike is not in the public domain. I was searching also for Deadpool, again, not in the public domain, and I literally found someone who is selling a phone wallpaper of the movie poster of Deadpool and Wolverine. And as you can enter the people's shops immediately when you click on the listing, this shop, RP Designs, also is selling Star Wars merch. Pokemon, X-Men, and a lot of other fun stuff. So why do you have manual reviews if you still literally allow people to sell this? Is the person on Payhip unaware that Nike is a brand, that Deadpool is a movie with copyrights and stuff like that? I really don't know. As a final thought for my final thoughts, I would like to discuss brand awareness or who even knows this marketplace existed? So as far as I can tell, it was launched around the end of July, maybe on the 24th because it was announced on X, but I actually found out that they have a marketplace two hours ago. It's 6.30 in the morning, I woke up early, I opened YouTube, and I saw a video from someone who I'm not even following talking about the launching of the, of the Payhip marketplace a month ago. So I found out by accident. Now, I'm going to say it this way. Let, let me take it down from steps to steps. You want brand awareness. You want people to know that there is a marketplace because if you're opening a marketplace and that's your point of, like, that's your hook, people are like, oh, they have a marketplace. Yeah, marketplace means audience as well. That's what people think in their head, which means you need to have people come to the marketplace, which means people need to know about the marketplace. And that can happen in various methods. That can happen if a, if a seller is announcing their own potential buyers on their own social media about the marketplace. It happens when you have YouTubers talk about it and it happens in social media and in stuff like that. So let's break it down and I'm going to start with the YouTuber thing. So I actually have an ongoing conversation with Payhip over on emails in the last few years, actually, because I made numerous videos about them, about the actual shop builder, not the marketplace. And when I got the notification that there will be a marketplace coming up soon, I actually contacted them to make sure that it wasn't a spam because it felt like it was kind of spammy. I don't remember really why. It, it was a really fishy email and it went into my spam folder. So I contacted them and they said, no, it's not a spam. It's really happening. We're going to have a marketplace. We had a few corresponding uh, emails and I even sent them my June news video, which was announcing the fact that Payhip will have a marketplace and you now can submit yourself. And crickets. I mean, you're already talking to a YouTuber who's making videos about you. Why didn't you tell that YouTuber, hey, we opened the marketplace? Now, it's not that I'm taking it personally because I'm a YouTuber. I'm also a seller on Payhip. And I have listed items to be on the marketplace. And as a seller, I didn't know that they have a marketplace. I was looking at that video that I happened to come across two hours ago, which changed my entire schedule for today. And in that video, she said that when she went in to like, you know, upload something, she had this like pop-up that says like, you know, we now have a marketplace. I never saw that. I never did. Every time I logged into the dashboard, it's the same. I don't even see it now. To be honest, even the page of telling you how to go into the marketplace or how to list items to the marketplace doesn't mention that the marketplace is already open or the link to the marketplace, which, by the way, I would leave in the description down below. I'm not going to make you search for it like they did. So if a YouTuber that talks about digital downloads doesn't know that Payhip has a marketplace and a seller doesn't know that Payhip has a marketplace, how are customers <laughs> supposed to know? So I'm going to take it to the other two options. The options of the platform will announce 
to the general public, not to the not to the sellers, but to the buyers. And the sellers are going to be talking about having this marketplace on social media. Let's touch up on the first one. And I am going to compare it to Etsy because it is a very big comparison. Etsy has over 3 million followers over on Instagram. And what they do is that they promote sellers. They promote their marketplace. Payhip has a little over than 2,000 followers on Instagram. I have more followers than Payhip on an Instagram where I share photos of Bulgaria. The tag of their Instagram is actually Payhip HQ, and it's not even verified. You're a full e-commerce company with a marketplace and you don't even have that V thing, which is not that hard to get. Now, the last thing that they uploaded ever to their Instagram account and also to their Facebook page was uploaded on May of 2023. Is that 2023? Wait, I wrote in the script May of 2023. But now I'm thinking, no, it can't be the case, right? It's, it's, it's May 2024. It can be May 2023. Wait, we're in 2024. When was that? <gasps> yes, it's 2023. I thought I made a mistake. I thought I was like writing May 2023. And I'm like, oh, that's like a year and a half ago. No, no, no. It's correct. The last time they uploaded to Instagram or to their Facebook was May 2023. Now, even their links page, like their link tree, doesn't feature a link to the marketplace. Hi, May the editor here. And I feel like there is a small side note that I need to put in. I was just saying that Payhip's link tree page doesn't even show their marketplace. Why are they even using link tree? Why aren't they using their own website building technology? I mean, you can make a links page on Payhip. Why is Payhip, a company that builds websites, uses Linktree? If I Google search Payhip Marketplace, I get to this uh, tree opening, to this like um, family tree opening of all the Payhip thing. And under the Payhip Marketplace is the link to the announcement that there will be a marketplace and how to list to it not a link to the actual marketplace. It, it took me quite a while to actually find a link to the actual marketplace. Now, I wanted to research the Instagram thing a bit more. So I searched on Instagram, Payhip Marketplace. There are 10 hashtags. The marketplace is open for over a month and there are 10 hashtags. Nine of them are from a crochet artist or someone who's selling like crochet patterns. And in her Instagram, there is a link to her Payhip store not to the pay -up marketplace because why would she send traffic to the pay -up marketplace it makes no sense but one of the images under the pay -up marketplace hashtags had sell your books on the new pay -up marketplace and i was like is that like a different pay -up account do pay -up have like a secret account on instagram did they change their name did they launch something no it's actually bookbolt bookbolt app instagram account said, open your books up to a new audience, Payhip HQ have announced their own marketplace, read our latest blog to learn how this can be a game changer for your sales. <laughs> so the only announcement on Instagram about this is from BookBolt. <laughs> how are you going to get buyers? After Instagram, I checked Twitter, or we're supposed to call it X now, right? So I went to X and yes, Payhip has announced on the 24th of July that they are opening their marketplace over on X to their 5,800 followers, out of which only 1,800 people saw the tweet. By the way, am I supposed to say tweet? Because tweet was from Twitter. So now you're tweeting on X? I don't know. And that tweet or X eat? on the 24th of July was actually the last thing that they posted. They haven't posted since. It's not like they're promoting the marketplace to an audience. Now, I am the last person to tell you, oh, go to Etsy or even like Creative Fabrica or Redbubble and you'll find an instant audience that will find all of your digital downloads or print on demand or whatever. I'm the last person to tell you that because it's not true. It's a combination. When you are on a marketplace, you need to find a way to shine within the marketplace. And usually that means to bring in your own traffic with your own marketing. And then the platform starts to think, wow, people are buying this product. I am going to recommend it when other people are searching for it. And, you know, all the work with the SEO and with the tags and everything. However, what's happening with Payhip is not going to be the same because of two things. One, I don't care how much your tags are going to be good. People are not going to find you on Payhip search because their marketplace search sucks. I feel like my ears are like burning up because I'm getting so hot from being angry. 
But yeah, the marketplace search bar sucks on Payhip. There is no user experience. It's really hard to find what you're looking for. And the second thing is, why, as a seller, would I refer people to my items on the marketplace? On Etsy, it makes sense. You're using Etsy as your shop. You're referring people to your Etsy store. On Creative Fabrica, it makes even more sense because you can affiliate your own store and make money with the affiliate link. But why on earth would I refer anyone to my product listings on the Payhip Marketplace when I have my own store? Because everybody on the Marketplace already has their own store. So why am I going to my items one by one without the option of filtering and remembering what I did to list them on the Payhip Marketplace? A marketplace that they didn't even bother telling most of the sellers about. It's not really talked about on YouTube. And if it's talked about, it's talked about by people like me who are talking to potential sellers, not the potential buyers. Wow, I really, I really didn't think I'm going to get so upset in this video. It's 6.30 in the morning. I shouldn't be so upset. Now, I feel like I'm diverting my, my rantiness about the Mickey Mouse Nike Deadpool plus bad UI UIs plus... What, what are you doing <laughs> into sheer laughter? <laughs> Maybe it's, you know, it's the time. It's, it's before my time. People say it's after my bedtime. This is before my wake up time when I'm recording this video. Seriously, it's literally 647 in the morning right now. So I do want to say this. I love Payhip as a platform. I love Payhip. I've been using them for three years, for over three years to sell digital downloads. I even have like that the page with all of the links and discounts for the viewers of the channel is on Payhip. I'm using them for three years and I love using them. I, I'm, I have a lot of freebies there. I have a lot of digital downloads there. You can have a blog there. I made multiple tutorials on the Payhip platform. I even made a video comparing this to Fourth Wall, for example. And I love their platform as a shop builder. But to be honest, I don't think the marketplace is worth my time. And it's not because my time is so valuable. I don't think it's worth your time. I mean, do people even come to the marketplace to buy? Do they have buyers? Where are they marketing it? I would love to know. And since they didn't really email me as a YouTuber to tell me that they have a marketplace or let me know as a seller that they have a marketplace, I don't feel the need to approach them and ask them, hey, where do you get your traffic? Instead, I'm just not going to waste my time with it. And I'm going to stick to what I actually like doing, which is using their free shop builder. And you know what? This is not in my script or something that I wanted to talk about, but I did mention the fact that I made a comparison video with fourth wall. So I think I'm going to add it to the end screen at the end of the video when I'm done talking. But also I'm starting to think because I do know that a lot of the viewers of the channel are interested in getting some of the merch that I'm wearing or the things that I'm designing for myself, even for example, this or some of my notebooks or some of my tumblers that I have in the videos or even the wall tapestry. So maybe it's time that I would switch to fourth wall because I can sell digital downloads there. My shop on Payhip is a mess. I mean, it's not that big of a mess, but I started it three and a half years ago and I've changed a lot since and maybe I want to, I don't know, put things differently. So I'm actually thinking now maybe I should move to fourth wall. I think that coming to this video with all this excitement about the marketplace and I'm like, you know what? I don't care that they didn't tell me. It's so exciting. They're reviewing items one by one and then seeing Mickey Mouse, Nike, Deadpool, uh, Star Wars kind of took the wind off my sails and it kind of got me thinking maybe I should go with something else and I feel like maybe this is the real consumerism psychology we need to understand here because I am a pay hip consumer. I am their consumer, not the people who buy from me. And if you can't keep your consumer in this world, there are a lot of different alternatives. So maybe this is something that I need to speak about with Vincent from Fourth Wall.
I moved to the side of the video so I can leave two video links or two links on the screen. The first one you're gonna see is going to be to the full PayHip playlist. It has nothing to do with our marketplace and everything to do with them as a shop builder, as well as the fact that you can have a blog there and how to upload things there, how to make a links page there and all that jazz. And the second video that I'm gonna put right here is going to be the comparison between fourth wall and PayHip when it comes to selling digital downloads. But with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!